On this episode of Country Boy Gas Garage, we finally installed this painless performance wiring kit. So let's go. That's right guys, we're gonna be rewiring this bus completely from front to back. This is our 1948 Ford F5 school bus we found abandoned in the forest for over 25 years. Now we were able to get it started and drove it out of there. And we're doing a whole revive and drive series on this bus. So go back and watch those previous videos. Uh, get caught up where we're at. You'd be amazed at what we've been through to get to this point. So let's go inside and get started. All right guys, we're installing this Painless Performance Products complete wiring harness. This is the 21 circuit classic customizable muscle car harness. It comes with everything you need to wire your vehicle from front to back. Um, this one's fully customizable, so it comes with extra length in the wiring, so you can cut it to length uh, depending on your vehicle. And it comes with all the clips, connectors, relays, and flashers um, to make your uh, connections. Now along with this wiring harness, I also picked up uh, all the necessary uh, components we're going to need. A headlight switch, an ignition, um, high beams, all the ground straps, relays. Um, I've even picked up extra uh, clips, connectors. Um, we got some heat shrink and some uh, wire loom. I also got this electric fan that we're going to be installing with all the hardware we need and connections. Um, some new headlights and taillight bulbs and you know all the tools we're going to need to install this. And it does come with an instruction manual as well so shouldn't have any issues getting this installed. Um, now the first thing we're going to have to do is uh, cut an opening in that firewall to mount this bulkhead and fuse panel. It comes with a little diagram that we can attach to the firewall to make our cuts and drill our holes and well let's get started. Okay, well I guess before we start mounting the new stuff, we're going to have to remove all the old stuff, um, including that temporary wiring that I had all set up with that old ignition to get it going. Um, and any remaining original wiring that's up under there has probably just got to go. Um, but uh, before I get up in there, i got to clean this spot up a little bit. I'll probably pull the chair out, and maybe even the shift rod and e-brake handle, because um, we'll... After the wiring is done, we're going to try to drop the transmission and replace the clutch anyway. So I'd like to make some room for me in here and uh, clean up all this dirt and uh, get up in here and try to find the best spot to mount that new uh, fuse panel. Um, so let's get cleaning some of this up. Alright guys, made a little bit more room and cleaned it up a little bit and I put some penetrating fluid on a lot of these bolts and stuff there, just rusted up underneath here. Um, you know, this window and dash area leak water really bad. So we're going to have to address that as soon as we can. Um, I'm going to have to pull out all these old switches and knobs. The headlight switch doesn't even belong there and that one's all frozen up. Um, and uh, I'll have to straighten out some of this. It got a little bent up, but that's where the ignition switch goes, and then the push button start goes here. Um, I did put the new clutch in, so that stays, but the rest of these little switches and doodads are going to go. Um, 
the headlight switch should fit in the dash right there. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get up underneath here and start cleaning up a little bit more and try to find a good spot for that fuse block. Um, possibly up in this corner. Um, let's take a look, see. Well guys, I've been working at this uh, instrument cluster for a while. Um, I'd already removed the bolts on the inside that hold it in place and it still wouldn't come free. Um, so I used a little bit of force pushing it back all the way around this, um, tapping it with a plastic mallet, and finally got it going. Um, the glass is cracked, uh, but they sell a replacement one um, if need be. Um, but we could get this out of here and either have it restored or uh, get a replacement for it. They sell all kind of aftermarket ones. Um, but now we can get the rest of this out of here. I'm hoping it just comes out through the back here fairly easy. With all this old wiring. I mean, this is all cloth wrapped wiring still from the 40s. Oh yeah, it's got the speedometer cable. I'm going to have to undo the speedo cable. And then that the headlight switch that we had mounted here would not come. I, I had to use a, a cutoff wheel, the angle grinder, and cut that bracket off, get that one out of here. So, well, got that out of there. All right, well, here we go. You know, it's got a cracked glass and it's a little rusty inside, but I think we could restore this. Um, and got all that old wiring out of here and that old headlight bracket we had to cut off. Now for wipers, they just had a toggle switch, and you know, I may just uh, reuse this or replace it with a new one, but uh, I don't have a switch other than a toggle switch for the wipers. And the blinkers is this aftermarket, you know, older style blinker um, setup that I'm hoping still works. Um, it was all wired in here, so I'm going to go ahead and keep that and see if we can't uh, wire that into the new harness. Well, also trying to figure out some of these uh, switches and lights. Uh, Follow some of these wires up and realize they came over to here. And, uh, well, this is uh, mark marker lights and dome lights. And, well, I've got a whole mess to deal with in here, too. So, well, obviously we're going to be bypassing all of this. But it's kind of interesting how this is all wired up. You know, I like to try to make sense of all of this before I just rip it all out of here. Um, kind of know what's going on. I'll probably take a few photos and then continue taking this stuff out. Okay, I didn't really take it all out and destroy it all. I just cut off the wires that needed to get out of the way that were rotten. And these, I'll just bypass all this stuff, but instead of getting rid of it, I'm just gonna tuck it back in here. And uh, that way I could refer back to it to follow the leads if I needed to. But since we're bypassing this, um, it doesn't even matter, but at least this way it preserves some of the old stuff. Um, if for whatever, for whatever reason, uh, we needed to refer back to it later for something, or somebody wanted to restore it, or I'm sure just having this uh, diagram or schematics of how they had this set up in the 40s might be helpful, but we'll just tuck it back in there and uh, run, our own, run our own wires. All right, on to the next. All right, guys, let me show you where we're at here. Got this all cleaned out for the most part, and now we're trying to figure out the exact placement of that fuse block. Um, this is the, the diagram that it shows that we have to cut out. You know, you do the four hole saws and then you connect them all with the straight lines with the jigsaw or cutoff wheel. Um, and so, you know, I was looking around in this general area and, uh, well, that's kind of where the bulk harness went through before. And, uh, well, it seems pretty straightforward that you could just put it anywhere, but let me kind of show you the fuse block itself up here. I can manage to get that over here. So we just kind of eyeball, because this thing's pretty big, a lot bigger than what that diagram has it for just the, the opening that you have to cut. So I need to figure out the placement by, you know, it's got a lot of stuff hanging down below. So I'm thinking I could actually get it up there in the corner and that might work. All the wiring can fit. These relays at the bottom will fit. 
I'll have to kind of use that hole there already and place this bottom corner just over that just right. And I think that will work. And I'll show you the other side and show you the firewall and what it looks like on the engine bay side. All right, here we are in the engine bay side and the firewall and uh, here's that existing hole. Now it seems like it'd be a nice spot to put it here, but because uh, the way the bottom of that uh, fuse box hangs down, there's that bracket from these uh, master cylinders and the brake and uh, clutch pedal in there. So it has no room to drop down. We have to move over here to the side where it has room for that to drop. So using this corner is where we got to go. Um, there is a hinge here, but that inside wiring harness, uh, it tucks pretty tight to the side. So I'm thinking uh, we could probably, like I said, use that existing hole for the, the bottom rounded corner of this opening and get it somewhat right about there. And that should work. So let's try that. I'm going to get this all cleaned up and lined up and uh, see how this is going to work out. Let's go. All right, I got the template stuck up in there and I went around and used my uh, center punch right here on each one of these uh, hole saws that I need to cut out. Except for this one, of course, that one's already been removed from the factory hole there. But uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to cut those holes Really? Dang it. All right, I'm gonna solve this problem. Stupid bit. All right guys, I'm back for my 45 minute round trip to the hardware store and back. I had to go get another one of these. Now I have other hole saws that you could replace this little uh, drill bit in the middle, but this metal one, you can't. I had to go get another metal hole saw this size. Um, I think what happened was uh, when I punched through, it just uh, bit too hard. Um, you know, that metal, 1948, they weren't playing around. That's some serious metal there. So what I need to do is go at it again with just a little more finesse. Um, I might actually drill out those pilot holes with a drill bit before I even go at it with this one because I don't want to break this one again. Um, so let's go at it. Okay, well I pre-drilled those pilot holes and well, let's get started with this hole saw here. I'm going to do a little more finesse. Alright, well now we just gotta get the jigsaw out or the cutoff wheel and uh, connect these rounded corners and that should be our opening. I might have to fine tune it a little bit with a file or a die grinder, um, but we'll get those straight lines cut out next. All right, now I just need to clean up the edges a bit with a file, maybe a die grinder, and test fit that fuse block. All right, let's do that. All right, there it is. Uh, clean it up a little bit and shot some paint on it. Now it's not perfect, but it'll do. All right, let's test fit this uh, fuse panel in here. Oh, 
it's a tight fit. Yeah, yeah, it fits in there just right. It's a little tight fit, you know, we're just touching right here, um, and there's not much space around it, but it's working. Um, we'll go around to the fireside and uh, attach that other end and see how that's gonna fit. All right, guys, as you can see, we got the fuse panel up protruding through the firewall there, and now that fit pretty good, so I went ahead and mounted it up. And now we got the engine bay side of that uh, wiring harness. Um, I went ahead and put some dielectric grease on all the connections there, keep them from corroding, and we'll install this right here. Now I know this is kind of close to this uh, hinge, but uh, we did the best we could, and this will tuck away from it, and this is about the closest it's going to get, and once we tuck these wires tight to the firewall, um, we shouldn't have any issues. Now you don't want to over tighten this, it'll break some plastic and uh, you just get it cinched up there, make it sure it's uh, going to be watertight with that ro rubber gasket there. Alright, well now we can start running these wires out to their uh, desired locations. Alright, I'm starting to get the initial layout of this engine uh, compartment side of this wiring harness. As you can see it's already kind of separated into its different areas. Um, you know it comes out this way. And we've got uh, a horn, a cooling fan, and it splits off to this side, which is going to be the, the driver's side headlight and turn signal and marker light. And that cuts over to this side to the passenger side, also headlight and turn signals. Um, and then uh, it's, part of it comes across the, the engine bay to this side, and we've got, uh, you know, our uh, solenoid. Um, coil, starter, what have you, and then these ones here go to the alternator. Um, so we're going to continue running these wires to their intended locations. Okay, well our first connection of that engine side wiring harness is going to be your driver's side headlight. And I did just kind of want to point this one out. I noticed there's like a little hole here, uh, either a rock chip or a BB hole or something, but this lamp is uh, full of water, well, up to there. <laughs> Now this headlight ring seems broken and floppy, so I, I did pick up a, a universal uh, retaining ring. So let's get this old one out of here and uh, get that first connection done. All right, got her out of there. Now that uh, hold down ring was actually fine. It was just a screw had vibrated out of there. Um, but I, I do got new headlights to put in here and uh, I also got new pigtails to replace these ones because well, even these wires and everything, this whole pigtail is all old and crusty, so. We'll replace that with new ones. Alright guys, we're making some good progress on the wiring up front here. Uh, let me show you what I got done. Alright guys, got the headlights all wired up with uh, new connectors even. Uh, the blinkers here and the blinkers here um, are all wired up, but these only had the single element bulbs um, and sockets, so they don't have the running light ability. So I'm going to change these uh, to double filament bulbs so we could have running lights as well as blinkers there. But for now, that'll work. I do need to get new bulbs though. Now the rest of the wiring is mostly ran and connected. Now keep in mind, I don't have the wire loom on there or any of the uh, attaching connectors to keep it all tidy, but um, we've got it mostly all ran to the spots. Um, now we still need to hook up the water temp gauge and the oil pressure setting unit and also the fan after I get that installed. Um, but everything else is all connected. Uh, the coil, um, we got the solenoid over there, the alternator's all hooked up, the battery connections, um, there's a new uh, painless breaker over there. Um, and we got that all connected. 
Um, now there's going to be a few wires that we're not going to use. You know, there's like the air conditioning compressor wire and a few other ones that we're just not using that uh, I'm just going to tuck back in under the dash out of the way until maybe someday we do need to use those. And also there's a few wires that are on the inside harness that I need to run out through the firewall as well. Um, the kit has it to where you run the tail lights through the interior panel of the car, but there's nowhere to run that in the bus uh, other than just laying it across the floor. Um, I'd like to run it the way they had this set up originally, and that's down underneath along the frame rail. Um, so we need to run a few wires through the firewall, and well, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole in the firewall and use the supplied grommet that comes with the kit um, so we can pass those wires through the firewall, and we'll continue running these wires and making the connections. All right, there it is. And I'll also be able to run the wires from the inside out through that um, as well. And I'll run those down along the frame, back to the tail lights. So let's go inside and uh, see what we need to do in there. Okay, there's that hole in grommet on the inside. We got the wires running through there. And we're starting to get some of these separated on the inside. Um, you know, we got our ignition and starting wires and uh, now there's a lot of this stuff that we're not going to be using, like a lot of this up here is for like door jam operated dome switches. Um, we got like cruise control and things that we won't be using. Um, now these are the tail lights and all the wiring that go to the brake lights. They, they usually have this uh, ran through the interior of a car, but this being a bus, it's uh, ran underneath along the frame rail. So we're going to tuck this back through the firewall through that grommet that we just made so we could run it underneath all the way back to the tail light. And they put about 22 feet of wiring in this kit to make sure you have plenty of length. So uh, let's get to that. All right, we ran those uh, tail section wires back through that grommet. Um, you know, those yellow ones we won't need. Those are uh, for door jam switches. Um, a lot of these ones here we don't need either. They'll get coiled up and put away. Except for one of those is the wiper motor, um, which is actually on the inside right here. Um, not even sure if that thing still works, but we'll we'll see. And then the rest of these are just kind of getting spread out to uh, figure out which direction they're all going to go. You know, most of this is under the dash stuff, so we're just going to keep at it. Well, guys, looks like we came inside just in time. That rain came in fast. Uh, I barely had time to put a tarp up over us. But we're cool. We're all dry in here. So let's continue with that wiring. Okay, I got all the wires that we're not using coiled up nice and neat up there behind the dash. And the rest of the wires, I've got them ran to their locations. Uh, you know, we've got our uh, ignition switch here. Um, we've got our wiper switch here. Um, we got all of our blinker and indicator lights here. I just got them wrapped up because I got to connect them to our blinker at some point. Um, we got our instrument uh, panel lighting and you know, these, some of these go to like the fuel gauge and what have you. Um, and then our headlight switch. Um, and we got our headlight switch here and then also back in here we got our high beam switch. So we got all the wires ran to where they need to go. Now we just need to start installing some of those dash components so we can start making the connections. So let's do that. Yeah, so like I was saying, it's time to start installing some of those dash components. So we'll uh, install the ignition and the headlight switch, um, the starter button, uh, the high beam switch, um, and start hooking up this uh, indicator as well. Um, so let's go get those. All right, well, these are the main dash components that I was referring to. You know, we got a keyed ignition with a push button start. Now, this is the original style setup for the bus. This is what it would have came with in 1948. Um, so I went ahead and purchased those, and, as well as a universal painless performance uh, headlight switch um, and a new high beam switch, too. So let's go get these installed. All right, as I'm getting this wired up, uh, most of this is straightforward, but some things I have to get the wiring schematics for. And some of those are pretty easy, like this universal headlight switch. Um, this one is actually supplied by Painless Performance Products. 
uh, but they have the schematics for this and most common headlight switches out there. Um, so that's not too hard, but when it came to this uh, ignition switch, um, this is the early 1940s Ford truck ignition switch, and uh, they don't have the schematics for this one, um, especially with the push button starter like this. And it took me a while, uh, a little bit of Google searching to finally figure it out because you know, these posts aren't even labeled like the common ignitions are. There's no battery in or accessories out. or um, This one is labeled coil. Um, but after a little bit of searching, I figured it all out. And, uh, well, now we're going to go ahead and get these all wired up. All right, I got that high beam switch all wired up. That was super easy. But... Uh, now onto the headlight switch. Alright, I'm wiring up this headlight switch and I figured I'd show you guys how I'm making the connections. You know, it comes with this uh, connector or bulk harness connector here. Um, and then with the wiring schematic supplied with the Painless Products uh, kit, um, you'll be able to cut these wires to length and then attach these factory style clips um, and then be able to run them into this uh, clip in the appropriate slot. And once I'm all done with that, it'll be able to just plug right into this headlight switch. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just like that. And then once you've properly terminated all the ends to the right length, and you can start installing them into the clip. You just push them in from the back like so, and then they clip into place. And then we'll just be able to clip this onto the headlight switch. And we'll get this installed in the dash. There it is. All right, now onto the ignition. Hey guys, that's something I wanted to mention is, uh, you know, I am kind of rushing through this a little bit. Um, you know, we're on a deadline. We're trying to get this bus back on the road in time for that church reunion, which is coming up fast. Um, but once that's over, I'll have a little more time to go back through. And, uh, you know, we have some rust repair that we need to do up here and fix this water leak. Um, I'd like to repaint the dash. Um, I'm getting that instrument cluster um, restored and you know I do have a clock that fits in here but you know after the church reunion I'll be able to come back through here and uh, go through and uh, clean this up a lot better fix these repairs and uh, paint the dash and restore the instrument cluster and same with the gas tank um, we kind of rushed through that also I'll be able to drop that and clean it out more thoroughly um, we'll go through some things but right now we're on a deadline trying to get this thing back on the road. So, well, let's continue. All right, I got the ignition all wired up here. And before I install it in the dash, I figured I'd show you what I got going on here. You know, uh, we have the, the battery power in right here. And then when you turn the key to the first position, um, it'll supply um, power to accessories and uh, power to the starter button here if we wanted to bump the motor over without actually starting it. Um, and then when you turn the key to the second position, the run position, um, it's going to supply power um, to the coil through the resistor on the firewall and then to all the components that would need to be on during the run position like gauges or fuel pump or something. Um, but that's how we got this wired up and now I'm going to install into the dash. Alright, let's get that key to ignition installed here. Now it's pretty beat up around this whole hole right here, but uh, we'll see if we can't get it in there. And then uh, there's supposed to be a, a bezel or a beauty ring that goes around this, which is out of stock apparently. So, you know, it's only going to look so good. 
Let's see if we can't get it in there. I might need two hands for this, guys. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, I think it's all locked in there. Finished getting this uh, push button installed there. Well, there's our key ignition with our new keys. Um, a little confused on the operation, but we'll figure it out. When you put the key in, you either go left or you go right. Um, so I assume left is accessories on, and then that's the run position, and then start. All right, now I'm gonna turn my attention to this turn signal. Uh, let's try to figure out these wires and see if we can't uh, adapt these into our uh, Panelist Performance wiring harness. Alright guys, it's been a couple days. Uh, this turn signal setup's been fighting me. I've spent hours uh, scouring and searching Google trying to find the wiring schematics for it. This thing is so old that the color codes and the wiring schematics don't uh, match up to this at all. Um, I eventually hooked up my other unit I have. I bought this one a few years back, probably 10 years ago, for a different project. Uh, it's still old, but I was able to get a wiring schematic for that one and figure out what the um, purposes for each one of these wires are intended for. And I think I successfully got it wired into the painless kit there. Um, I guess we won't know until we power this thing up. But, uh, I think I've got I left this loose with a little length in case we have to dig in here and uh, mess with it but it's pretty much the same unit just a little bit newer um, if I could figure out this old one I'll get that one wired in but for now we're gonna do this and uh, see how this works um, next is the instrument cluster um, and I'm getting that repaired uh, I'm getting a new uh, glass made for it um, in town so once we get that back, we'll be able to finish those connections. You know, we've got like instrument cluster, illumination lights, and we have a fuel gauge. And uh, there's a few different ones here, all going to the instrument cluster. So once that gets back, um, we'll get that installed and finalize those wiring connections. Uh, next, I'd like to get underneath and start running those uh, tail light wires all the way to the back. So let's do that. Okay, here's all that wiring going to the tail lights. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tuck it down underneath and run along the frame rail. All right, getting those wires ran along the frame rail here. And uh, we're about halfway back. I'm gonna pull a couple wires out of this section and uh, loop them up and leave them here. Um, they'll go over to the gas tank, um, fuel setting unit, uh, fuel pump if we ever wanted to install one. Um, but for now, we'll just uh, terminate those right here and we'll continue on with the rest of the wires okay here we are on the back of the bus now a bunch of these wires I don't need and I've just looped up here for now these consist of like reverse lights and trunk dome lights um, power antenna um, but they're all right here if we ever need to tie into them and then the brake lights head on back and we've got the, the left tail light and brake light and the right tail light and brake light. Now these uh, shoot up into the rear wall cavity where we can connect the rear tail lights. Well, let me show you. All right, here we are at the back wall of the bus and if you remove this access panel, uh, you can get to those tail lights. So let's wire those up. All right, got them all connected up. Let's go outside and take a look at those tail lights. All right, here we have the tail lights. Now these are obviously been replaced with some cheaper aftermarket plastic trailer lights. Um, they'll work for now to get us on the road, but as soon as I get a chance, I want to replace these with some reproduction glass tail light lenses, similar to the ones that originally ran on this bus. All right, let's get some new uh, light bulbs in there. All right, got those new bulbs in there. It was pretty rusty, and these bulbs are pretty uh, loose and sloppy in there, so hopefully these will even work. All right. As I was finishing up the brake lights, I figured I'd uh, point out this uh, brake light switch that I installed. This is a pressure switch style, and uh, well, the only reason I chose this one is because it was the style that was already on here. Uh, my other option would be a, a mechanical style that you'd mount on the brake pedal itself. Um, but this should work for now. And I got the fan all wired up. Got that all installed. 
And I also wired up a little surprise for you guys, so you have to wait till later for that. Um, well, next we're going to install these uh, ground straps. All right, the ground strap is hooked up. It was from the frame to the body and to the motor, all triangulating right there. So that should work. All right, guys, I got it all hooked up. I think it's time to go put a battery on and see how it works. So let's go. You know, there's still a few things that we haven't connected. Um, you know, we haven't got the instrument cluster in yet, so all those wires are still hanging here. But that shouldn't uh, stop us from uh, seeing if the rest works. But, yeah, as soon as we get that instrument cluster back, then we'll be able to hook that all up in those last sending units. And, uh, well, you know, we've left this pretty loose in case we have to dig back into it. But, uh, yeah, guys, I think it's time to hook it up. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm a little nervous, guys. Uh, I guess the first thing we'll do is hook it up and see if there's any sparks or smoke. So, let's see here. No sparks. No smoke. I won't put this on there too tight in case I have to pull it off. Alright. Well, I'm going to turn the key to the accessory position and see... Okay, I'm going to flip on some headlights and see if any come on. No smoke or sparks. Ugh. No headlights. Okay, well let's check and see what's going on here. Now I know we, we don't got the best of grounds, but the headlights I thought would have worked. Turn those back off. I'm not sure why we don't have headlights. Try the blinker. Yeah, we have no lights, no blinker. Let me try to bump the motor. Not a. Okay, is my battery dead? Let's check it out. Okay, I think I figured it out, guys. And in this uh, painless performance uh, fuse breaker right there. I forgot to put this in there. It's the fuse. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that installed and we'll try it again. All right, there we go. We installed that uh, main fuse breaker. Um, rookie mistake. We'll go ahead and uh, get this buttoned up and we'll try it again. All right, guys, let's try it again. Do the same thing over. Hopefully no sparks or smoke. There. So far, so good. Now I'm gonna turn the keys to the accessory position. So far, so good. Now let's try those headlights. Dang, still no headlights. Well, now I gotta troubleshoot that. I still gotta figure out why we have no lights. I wonder if we have a fan. Yep. Electric fan's working. Nice. So we got some power. No headlights though, huh? Let's see here, headlights back on. Run position. Try the blinkers. I hear a flasher. Oh, left blinker's working. I'm sorry, right blinker. Right blinker's working. First sign of life, guys. Well, big question is, will it start? I guess I'm gonna try hitting the ignition once in the accessory mode and see if it even works. Well, should we try it? Well, it didn't fire, but it's cranking. She 
Daisy's Island. It works. Woo! I just need to get some lights working. All right. I just don't know why the headlights weren't working. So let me uh, troubleshoot that for a bit and see if I can't figure that out. We got headlights, guys. It was just a bad ground on the headlight switch on the dash. That dash is pretty rusty, so I just uh, cleaned up a little bit of rust and uh, tightened it up, and voila, we got headlights. All right, we got it all wired up, guys. And I mentioned I had a surprise for you guys, so check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Ugo horn from the swap meet. Okay, one more time. <laughs> I love it. Got the Uga horn installed. That's right. Got the one from the swap meet and uh, installed it in here. Uh, sounds great in the bus. All right, guys. That was a total success. Now, I appreciate all you guys watching. And I could really use your support getting this bus back on the road. So please go check out www.countryboygasgarage.com and pick yourself up some merch. We got t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, all kinds of stuff. So go check it out and help me get this bus back on the road. Also, you got to check out my buddy Kelly's Instagram page, Spider Hole Customs. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, he's building a wicked chopper. So go over and check out Spider Hole Customs on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. You like, comment, and share with your friends. Until next time, peace. store and pick you up some hoodies or t-shirts we got all kinds of sizes there's new items being added all the time so go check out www.countryboygasgarage.com and pick yourself up some merch